Hey guys, it's Andrew, the Murphy Nation, and I think I made it very obvious that my adoration for Persona 5 is quite extensive. I remember trying out Persona 5 Vanilla when I was still in grad school and student teaching after hearing that Joker was going to be announced as Smash Ultimate's first DLC fighter, and I was immediately hooked. I also bought Persona 5 Royal, and I sunk hundreds of hours into that game, and it really helped pass the time when our quarantine was first starting out. And I've even gone to say that this is my favorite game of all time. So you can imagine that I was so excited to hear that Persona 5 Strikers was coming to the US on the PS4, Switch, and even PC, which I was very excited about. I didn't know too much about the game, but during the 2020 Video Game Awards, Lin and the Persona Music Band did a performance of Last Surprise, which is Persona 5's main combat theme, and the overall sound of this new version was drastically different. So I notated this to the best of my ability, and I wanted to do a video comparing and contrasting the two versions. But of course, before we do anything, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more Persona 5 music content, be sure to hit the like button, comment what you thought down below, and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified as to whenever I upload new content. Alright, let's get into it. So let's get a firm understanding of what message Last Surprise is trying to get across to the listener. Let's look at the lyrics of the first verse. Okay, so let's stop right here. Already, these lyrics give off this very big vibe of confidence. The use of the word you in these lyrics doesn't necessarily resemble Joker and his companions in the second person. It's more along the lines of Joker and company addressing the shadows themselves. It gives off this feeling that the shadows you encounter should prepare for a fight that they're not going to survive. Let's move on. Okay, let's stop here too. Persona 5 is actually a lot different than the previous two Persona games in the sense of shadows in the dungeons that you explore. Shadows in Persona 3 and 4 were more just monsters that appeared in Tartarus or the TV world based off people's cognitions of those showing up on the Midnight Channel. But in Persona 5, the shadows serve a purpose as members of your target's palace where they proudly serve the ruler of that palace. So for example, Kamashita's shadows were all knights who proudly served him, Madarame's and Kanashiro's were police officers, etc. They willingly support and assist the ruler of the palace. So when the Phantom Thieves begin to enter their ruler's cognitions, those clear blue skies of getting away with their crimes are ruined by this thunderstorm of knowing that the ruler may be defeated and the palace may disappear. It's actually incredibly symbolic, I love that about this. Now let's move on to the chorus. Never see it I think one of the things that I love about this chorus is how animalistic it is, if that makes sense. It really has this predator-like feel to it that's almost kind of unsettling. Almost as if you kind of get used to taking down shadows a certain way in order to get more experience. It's as if taking down the enemy was so fast that it was completely unexpected. Definitely the best part of the song, hands down. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the second verse because it's practically the same thematically as the first verse, but let's take a look at what comes in after the second chorus. This 
line doesn't have as much animalism as the chorus, but I really do enjoy how this line is giving the shadows, and enemies for that matter, a second chance to kind of back out before they're defeated and pulverized. So I think that we can all agree that this song just exudes confidence. But let's move on to some of the biggest differences between these two versions of this iconic battle theme. So right off the bat, the biggest thing to talk about is the difference in genre. I talked about this in my overall review of Persona 5 Royal, but the main genre of this game's soundtrack is classified as acid jazz. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that exists. So, the original Last Surprise has this kind of sound that makes you want to move around while you're in the middle of combat. It's got a really fun bass groove that's easy to vibe to, and it's just fun to listen to in general. But the remix for Strikers is more of a hard rock kind of style. The instrumentation is very different as you would imagine as well. In the main version of Last Surprise, the main instruments used are the violin, guitar, drums, vocals, bass, and a Rhodes piano. Whereas the remix is your typical rock band formation with two guitars, bass, drums, and vocals. The main riff of the song is these two 16th note patterns followed by an 8th note run with slight variations as it progresses. Give it a listen. I think what helps make this riff more interesting to listen to is how a lot of these notes are syncopated or played on an offbeat. Listen to how much different this would sound if we just played straight rhythms, always starting on one, two, three, or four. It doesn't sound as good, right? I briefly touched upon this with my Gentle Madman analysis video, but syncopating rhythms help make a piece sound more interesting. So go check that video out after this one. Link in the iCard above and the description below. The original version of the main riff is played specifically by the violins, which provide a much more delicate sound to the piece that make it seem more orchestral and regal to me. But in the remix, the main riff is played by the lead guitar while at some points being harmonized by the second guitar. The use of this additional harmony helps the overall color of the remix, since the violins in the bass version are just playing the same thing octaves apart. Violins do in fact show up in the remix, but they just play a new riff in order to add intensity to that chorus. Now I think one of the biggest things that contributes to the power of the remix is when Lin enters and sings this G sharp that slides up to an A. The sharp 4 sliding up to the dominant in order to progress the momentum of the intro. It really gives off this war cry vibe to help hype up the listener, and it really helps bump up the intensity of that intro. Now I can't help but feel that if Lin didn't do that intro, the transition between the beginning of the piece and the musical lines that lead to the verse, where the guitars are chugging away with a D, B flat, C to C sharp chord progression, it kind of would have sounded a lot more rough and coarse. Speaking of chords, the chord progression is a lot different too, which leads to a lot of strange intervals throughout this piece. The main chords used in the remix are D, B flat, C, and C sharp, as I said before, but they're sometimes played in a different order, especially in the chorus, where instead of being played first, the guitarists play that D chord as the last chord in the progression in order to provide some kind of sense of resolution. You never see it come back. To put things into perspective, in the original version of Last Surprise, the main verses alternate between a D minor 7 and a G7 chord. So it's alternating mainly between the tonic and the dominant, which is a pretty typical kind of progression that you'd hear in a lot of popular music. However, in the remix, the progression goes mainly between D minor and B flat. So it's alternating between the tonic and the submedian, and that's not one of the more common progressions that you'll see these days. But during the chorus, the progression goes from B flat major 7 
to A minor 7, to A flat 7, to G minor 7. So there's a few things to take out of this. Firstly, one thing that I found really interesting was that the G chord completely changes in tonality between the verse and the chorus. But I also realized that the progression in the original chorus is going in the exact opposite direction as the remix. While it's not entirely chromatic, the remix's chorus goes in an upward direction with its chords B flat to C, to C sharp, to D. Whereas the original chorus goes in a downward direction with B flat to A, to A flat to G. So they're both starting on the same note, but it's that difference in motion and direction that help add more overall intensity to the song and make it more interesting. However, these chords in the remix add some complexity to the relationship between the voice and the guitar. An excellent example of some interesting intervals in this piece are mainly seen in the chorus, specifically when the guitars are holding out this C sharp chord while Lynn sings the words, that my mind is, on a G, which then resolves down to an F. What makes this measure so interesting is that Lynn is actually creating a tritone with the guitars. A tritone is an interval of an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth. So in case that doesn't really narrow things down for you, the way that I like to discover intervals is by looking at the top note, which in this case is G, and seeing if it's in the key of the bottom note, which in this case is C sharp. Since G natural is a half step lower than what's normally in the key of G sharp, we have a diminished fifth interval here. You never see it Even at the very beginning of the chorus, the guitars and bass are playing B flats while Lynn sings the word coming on A and then moving to a C, which changes the interval from a major 7th interval to a major ninth. Now, one final interval that I want to point out is in measure 80. Lynn here is singing slightly syncopated rhythms going from A to G to F, but once Lynn sings that G, it completely clashes with the G sharp that's being played in the bass at that time. This creates a diminished octave interval. Now, one of the things that I adore about this remix is that they give the second verse this more laid-back feel. It's kind of smug sounding. And what makes this work so well with the remix is that we're playing the sequel to Persona 5. And I know that that sounds like a terrible explanation, but let me elaborate real quick. The Phantom Thieves know what they are capable of here. They've infiltrated numerous palaces, taken down menacing shadow forms of corrupt individuals, and I've even taken down Yaldabaoth, the god of chaos and order. They're a bit cocky in their power and potential, which is why I think that this works so well musically. And because of this, I feel like the remix exudes confidence so much more than the original version. <laughs> To add on, another interesting musical idea is when we finish up the second chorus and we have this small section that leads us into the bridge, where the guitars are playing their harmonized main riff, but the bass is playing this descending chromatic 16th note run to help move the progression along. This chromatic motion adds this really menacing feeling to the piece, but I don't think it's supposed to be menacing from the Phantom Thief's point of view here. I think it sounds menacing from the enemy's point of view, and I love that. Now one final musical idea in the remix that helps add more power to it is the use of unison rhythms throughout. At the end of the chorus, when Fast for Eyes, Last Surprise, Fast So Fine, and Catch It in Time are sung, the guitars and bass are all playing the same rhythms to show synchronicity between the parts. 
Another excellent example of this is actually right at the very beginning of the piece where the drums play the same rhythm as the main riff as well. It really helps provide this gigantic buildup for Lin's introduction, which I've already discussed and love. So hopefully you guys were able to see how I think the remix to Last Surprise exudes its confidence in more ways than the original version from Persona 5. If you guys enjoyed the video and found this video interesting, click that like button and leave a comment telling me what songs I should work on for a video next. Also, if you want to view more of my content, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be updated on whenever I upload a brand new video. I also do stream four days a week. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll actually be streaming Persona 5 Strikers right as this video finishes. Link to my Twitch channel in the description. And of course, be sure to come check out my new Discord server as well. Link to that will be in the description below. With all that said and done, I'll see you all in the next one. And I believe you called forth your power like this. Persona.